What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel, The Shotgun Shogun. And in this episode of Should You Pull, we're going to be talking about Blood Moon Haste. Now, Blood Moon Haste was just announced today. And I'm just going to say I am already pretty... I'm going to be pulling this character because this character is just absolutely amazing. And we're going to go over that. Not only was it kind of out of left field, I didn't expect a Moonlight Haste of all things to be announced. Now, do be aware that it is going to be in the middle of quite a few other banners that are pretty, pretty important. So if you've got Mystics, awesome but we'll talk about it but let's first off let's get into what this what this beautiful boy is bringing to the table the that s3 is just amazing i uh, the minute i saw that i was just like bruh bruh just pulling for that alone so we're going to get through all of this stuff if you want to link this down here at the bottom but we're going to get into the stats that's the real the real important thing here right okay so first off let's talk about his overall stats so health pretty beefy uh defense is huge almost 800 defense you get almost 5500 health speed is a little low at 98 but he is a soul weaver so kind of expected i do like the health self imprint and you're going to find out why additionally you do have the attack on the back imprint so if you do need to have the extra attack that's cool if you want you can do the self imprint you can you can use your normal hastes because you know they're not gonna they're not gonna specialty they're not gonna buff him or give him ex exclusive equipment ever so yeah but dark soul weaver didn't expect a soul weaver either so that was really really cool i do like the i do like the the whole just aesthetic of him okay so moon slash this is going to be his s3 right attacks with the scythe recovery and the health of all allies this penetrates defense but cannot trigger a critical hit now it doesn't say it, how much defense right so does it might it'll probably just just gets rid of all defense so the nice thing is so you're gonna to want to be building him for damage right because you're just gonna penetrate defense don't have to worry about crit don't have to worry about crit chance you can just go straight on to the damage now if you did look his damage is pretty low and that means that flat attack is going to be absolutely poggers on this dude so flat attack you now have an, a thing to do with your flat attack uh, right hand side gear. So anyways, damage dealt in a more amount recovered increases proportional to the caster's max health. Decreases damage suffered by allies by 10% when this skill is available. When more than one damage reduction effect is granted, only the strongest effect is applied. Now you might not want to use this all the time because when you have this available, bam, 10%, 10% decreased damage. Now, this is kind of like Green Armin's ability where when her S3 is down, she gets 10% reduced damage. But this is also going to stack with Arius. This is also going to stack with uh, Adamant Shield, Little Queen Charlotte's S2. This is going to make your team really, really tanky. And like I said, you're going to want to build this character super thick. You're going to want to build this character pretty high damage because you're going to be bringing a lot of damage. And you're going to be wanting to have quite a bit of hp on here now this is uh your typical s3 right damage damage one turn damage 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 now it is on a six turn cooldown so you're gonna be at five turns but we'll get into some more stuff here in a hot second heal too so you might not, you this isn't something you're gonna want to open up with right you're gonna want to save this for when you need heals when you need to just do some damage okay now s2 this is grudge when an enemy is revived grants all allies a barrier and debuff immunity for one turn and resets the cooldown of moon slash which means that you're gonna be taking 10 percent less damage as well barrier strength increases proportional to the caster's max health now you're going to be getting what is that uh, 5 15 30 50 percent extra 50 percent extra barrier yeah i think i'm pretty sure it's 50 percent. yeah yeah it is i can i can math this early in the morning so 50 percent extra barrier this is based off of ml haste's 
uh, HP. So you're going to want to build it super thick so that you get, whenever an Arbiter Vildred comes back, guess what? Giant shield, 10% less damage. There's probably an Arius on your shield. Maybe you're running a little Queen Charlotte. Guess what? Arbiter Vildred, you ain't doing nothing. Ain't doing nothing. So why even worry about bringing a Spez or an ML Angelica when you can just bring this? And not only that, but it's going to cool down your S3, meaning that you can just follow up and, and heal everybody for what little damage uh, Arbiter Vilger did, right? Now they show they show a, a greater basket Arbiter Vilger res and just how little damage it did. Okay, so he comes back right here. So we got greater basket. I just want to point out that, that that didn't even break that shield. Now, we don't know just how much, uh, what the stats are on either side, but you've got a greater basket Arbiter Vildred here who literally did not, didn't even break the shield that Haste had up. That's, that's ridiculous. That's, it's insane. Like, Again, yeah, we don't know what the stats are on either side of that, but even even bearing that it's mediocre gear on both sides, that's still really, really good. Now, S1, this is Blood Scythe, attacks, with a sw uh, swinging, attacks by swinging a scythe, dispelling one buff, already amazing. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. You get three points here. This is going to increase damage. Not only that, but Soul Burn is going to ignore effect resist. So you needed to get a buff gone? Easy peasy. Just uh, And the thing is, it's not a chance to dispel a buff. It's just... When you do your S1, it just dispels a buff. Just, oh, you had immunity? and eh, now you don't. Gone. Oh, you had increased defense? Eh, get that out of here. So this is going to be really, really good as well, especially if you're running characters like Lilius, Kitty Clarissa, uh, anybody who's hitting those dual attacks and stuff like that. This is going to be getting rid of those buffs that they wanted to have on there. Now, that does mean you're going to need to bring a little bit of... Um, effectiveness onto him uh, but you get effectiveness on pretty much everything right you get effectiveness on everything now that's going to be able to get rid of Kron's uh immortality if that's the only buff that's up so overall I think that this unit is going to be very, very impactful. Uh, the nice thing is, is if you do have some mystics saved up right now, it's not going to be that detrimental to you rolling for, uh, let's say, Biken, Dizzy, Elfelt, uh, anything like that. So a little bit separate. Um, so there is that, you know, uh, it is a very amazing character. I think that it's going to really, really shake up the meta. It doesn't even, it's a hard counter to Arbiter Vildred, but people like Ruel, people like Maid Chloe, this is going to be a hard counter to them as well. Now, you might think, oh, well, when Maid Chloe brings everybody back, you're only going to get one shield and you only get it for one turn. And well, as soon as you go, that's gone. Here's the thing, though, is your S3 is back up. You're getting 10% less damage. You already wiped them out. They're all still super low. Just, just come through and kill them again. Like you have the, like wherever they're at on the CR thing, if they're going before any of your other units, you got the shield, you got the debuff immunity, you got the 10%, you're probably running an Arius and they're not going to be able to be as impactful as they were. And if there is a threat and you're going before them, we'll just take the threat out before you, before you lose your shield. Pretty simple stuff. Because, I mean, they're coming back at, like, this much hit points, right? Like, nothing, really. So, it'll be really easy to kill them right afterwards. Now, one of the big things, we're going to go back to back here to uh, the stats, right? So, like I said, with attack, because this attack's so low, um, if you are going to try to do, like, health, attack, whatever, to, like, kind of amp up a little bit of his damage on, like, the S3, the S1s, you will want to go with flat 
health. However, because he scales everything off of health, uh, it's probably better to just go four piece speed, two piece health with health, health speed on the right hand side to just make him as thick as humanly possible. Now, he's not going to be really doing much damage, but the damage he does is going to be impacted by that health. The heal is going to be impacted by that health. The shield's going to be impacted by that health. So, and also having him fast and thick is going to allow you for more S1s to dispel buffs. Overall, I think that this character is, is huge. I can see a lot of him fitting into quite a few teams. Now, one of the big things is you're going to have to worry about is... What if you have unbuffable when somebody revives, then you're not going to be getting the shield or the debuff immunity. So you are going to have to kind of think about that. So if they open up on a, on you with a Basar, you got debuff immunity or uh, can't be de can't be buffed. You're going to have to cleanse that before you pop an Arbiter Vildred, right? So there's things like that to kind of consider. But overall, I think that this unit is absolutely amazing um it will be interesting to see what the modifiers are on how much that health helps out but i do think that even regardless of doing damage this unit is going to be very very big in support and the heal not only that but like let's say if you do have them fast you're going to be getting a lot more s3s off right and you're going to be able to get a lot more aoe healing clutch aoe heals when you need them because you're not going to be using your s3 all the time to do damage because you're going to want to save it because you're going to be taking less damage. So honestly, you're going to be S one with him the vast majority of the time. And you're going to hold your S three until you absolutely need it. Like right before, let's say that's what you use to kill an Arbiter Vildred so that when he comes back, your S three is all um, automatically back up. So honestly, do I think that you should pull this unit? 100%. I'm going to be pulling this unit. Um, I have a, a fair amount of mystics. Now I'm probably going to have to just get more and go to pity on it, but we'll see not only that, but I mean, that S three is amazing. The, the aesthetic here is the whole aesthetic thing here is amazing. Uh, and haste is haste is best boy. I do wish that they would buff regular fire haste, but you know what? I'll take this anyways, guys, that's my opinion on blood moon haste let me know in the comment section what you guys think are you going to be pulling for it do you think that this character is going to shake up a bit of the meta especially like near the top where revive is very very prevalent let me know and if you haven't yet and you are here and you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button smash the bell notifications drop me that like in the comment down below and share this out to help me beat the youtube algorithm and i will catch you guys on the next one take it easy homies peace Thank you.